Hi, I'm Andy the Palm Springs Linguist. For today's adventure, I'm gonna be hiking the trails in Indian Canyons at Palm Canyon while counting down five small details that make a big difference in other languages. Minimal pairs are pairs of words or phrases that differ by only one variable. For example, arrive and alive are a minimal pair because they sound exactly the same except one has an er sound and the other has a ol sound in its place. Minimal pairs is a strategy that linguists use to find evidence to determine whether a linguistic feature in a language can change the meaning of an utterance. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound that can change the meaning of a word in a given language. When analyzing English, Minimal pairs are usually focused on one phoneme being different between two words. However, there are variables other than phonemes that can be contrastive. So let's look at five different ways that typically do not change the meaning of words in English, but do change the meaning of words in other languages. The number five small detail that makes a big difference in other languages, phoneme length. In English, if we lengthen a phoneme by pronouncing the sound longer, there is no change in meaning. For example, whether I say canine or k9, the word remains the same. It's still canine. Even though I pronounce them differently, they are still the exact same word. In some other languages, how long you pronounce a sound can change a word into a completely different word with a completely different meaning. Let's look at an Italian example. Cane means dog. But if you lengthen out the n sound, it changes to cane, which means canes, not dog. Here's another example. Pala means shovel. But if you lengthen out the ol sound, it changes to pala, which means ball not shovel. Beyond Italian, phoneme length can change the meaning of a word in languages such as Finnish, Arabic, Japanese, Hungarian, and Fijian. The number four small detail that makes a big difference in other languages, stress. Typically, one of the syllables in a word is pronounced louder than the others. The loudest syllable is considered the stressed syllable. Stress does matter in English, but it doesn't usually substantially change the meaning of the word. For example, the only difference in meaning between insult and insult is part of speech. The content of the word is exactly the same. If you stress the first syllable, an insult is a noun. If if you stress the second syllable to insult is a verb. Part of speech aside, there is no substantial difference in meaning. However, in some languages, such as Spanish, the stress of the word can substantially change the meaning of the word. For example, if you stress the first syllable, papa means potato. But if you stress the second syllable, papa means dad. Papa and papa are minimal pairs, with the only thing that is different between these words is which syllable is stressed. Another example is hablo español, which means I speak Spanish, and hablo español, which means he spoke Spanish. Notice that changing the stress in a verb can not only change the tense from present to past, but also the subject from first person to third person, he or she. Since stress is critical in Spanish, the writing system uses accent marks to indicate the stress. The number three small detail that makes a big difference in other languages, aspiration. Aspiration is when a consonant is pronounced with a strong puff of air. English does have some aspirated consonants, but they only appear in certain contexts and native speakers do not even notice the difference, let alone consider them different sounds from their unaspirated counterpart sounds. Take notice of the aspirated P sound. Pool, pool. Now take a look at the unaspirated P. Spool, spool. If an English speaker mispronounced the words, such as wrongly saying pool or spool, while they may be mispronounced, English speakers do not consider them different words. You would just sound like you have an accent. French is a language that never aspirates its consonants. So take a look at the difference between the aspirated P in English and the unaspirated P in French. Pool, piscine. Korean is a language that considers aspirated consonants to be completely different sounds than unaspirated consonants. 
If you take a word such as the Korean word for fire, which starts with an unaspirated P, and pronounce it instead with an aspirated P, it changes to the Korean word for grass. A completely different word. The only difference in pronunciation is the aspiration, but the meanings are completely different. Beyond Korean, several other languages can create contrasting minimal pairs by aspirating a consonant, such as Icelandic, Armenian, and the Native American language Lakota. For more information, information on aspirated consonants. Watch my video, Could English Spread COVID-19 More Than Other Languages? The number two small detail that makes a big difference in other languages, grammatical gender. Grammatical gender refers to a system of categorizing words into word classes. There can be any number of genders in a language, but often there are two or three. While modern English does not have a gender system of categorizing nouns, old English had three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter, as reflected in the modern pronouns him, her, and it. Some languages have separate genders for animate nouns and inanimate nouns. The Fula language in Western and Central Africa has more than 20 classes of words. Grammatical gender is not the same as natural gender. Grammatical gender refers to classes of words, while natural gender refers to whether a person or an animal is male or female. In several languages, there is some overlap between grammatical gender and natural gender. For example, the French word le chien refers to a male dog and is a masculine noun, and la chienne refers to a female dog and is a feminine noun. However, grammatical gender is much more than natural gender, and may not even correspond to natural gender at all. For example, in French the word for desert is masculine, le désert, but a desert cannot be male or female, it has no natural gender. But it does have grammatical gender in French, and that gender is masculine. Grammatical gender basically no longer exists in modern English, but there are some rare occasional exceptions. For example, did you see that magnificent boat? Isn't she a beauty? Notice that a boat is referred to with either it or she, but never he. So, does that mean the noun boat is feminine in English? Well, modern English speakers don't think that way, but many languages do. However, in some languages, there are examples of minimal pairs of the exact same word, meaning something entirely different, with the only difference being the gender of the noun. Since the two nouns look and sound the same, the only way you can know which one is being mentioned is to pay attention to the gender of the words in the same noun phrase. For example, determiners and adjectives to determine the meaning of the noun itself. Here are some examples in French. The French word for the that is used in masculine noun phrases is le, and the French word for the that is used in feminine noun phrases is la, livre, when masculine means book, and when feminine means pound, rose, when masculine means the color pink, and when feminine means rose the flower. Manche, when masculine means handle, but when feminine means sleeve. Moule, as a masculine noun, translates to mold, but as a feminine noun, translates to muscle. Beyond French, several other languages have grammatical gender, including Spanish, German, Norwegian, Arabic, and Hindi. Now we've arrived at the number one small detail that makes a big difference in other languages, tone. Tone is the use of pitch in language. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound. Intonation is the rise and fall of your voice. All languages use tone to a certain degree, but for different outcomes. One of the ways that English uses tone is to turn a sentence that would otherwise be a statement into a question. Notice the difference between the money is on the table is a statement, but the money is on the table is a question. The difference between these two sentences is the intonation or change of pitch. This can also be applied to single words in English to express certainty or doubt. Finished expresses more certainty and finished expresses more doubt. However, the tone of your voice in English doesn't change the word into a completely different word with a completely different meaning. This is the case in Mandarin. In Mandarin, if you take what would be the exact same word in English because it has the exact same sounds in the exact exact same order, but you change the tone of the word, such as a rising pitch or a falling pitch, then the meaning of the word changes to something that might be completely unrelated to the original word. Let's look at four examples in Mandarin. Ma means mother, but Ma means hemp, and Ma means horse, yet Ma means gold. 
tone is used to distinguish words that would otherwise sound exactly the same to create different meanings in vocabulary in languages such as Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese, and Thai. Now I want to hear from you. As an English speaker, which of these details do you think would be difficult to attend to when learning another language? Discover language you were never taught in school while exploring the California desert and beyond. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe right now to not miss any future episodes of the Palm Springs Linguist. As you can see, what makes up a word in one language can be very different than what makes up a word in English. Thank you for joining me along the trails in Palm Canyon in Indian Canyons. I'm Andy, the Palm Springs Linguist. Until next time, I'm off to the pool.